if you get 18 out of 18 in this question, then your math is really good. Uh, let me show you why I say that. So we have the graphs of F and G that are drawn below. A point of intersection of F and G is B, the turning point of F. The graph F has X intercepts minus 3 and X is equal to 5 and the Y intercept at C. The first question 5.1. Let's write down the coordinates of the turning point of f. Well, we are told that f of x is equal to minus 1 divided by 2 multiplied by x minus 1 squared plus 8. When your equation is written in this format, 1 will be the x value of your turning point and 8 will be the y value of your turning point. So the coordinates of b the turning point of f is x is equals to 1 and y is equals to 8 that's pretty much basic it's not a difficult question whatsoever let's go ahead and do 5.2 in 5.2 we're looking for the x coordinate oh well for the coordinates of c not the x coordinate c is the y intercept of f so y intercept i know x is equals to 0 if I go ahead and substitute x is equal to 0 into f of x, I'm going to have minus 1 divided by 2 multiplied by 0 minus 1 squared plus 8. Let's take a look at this. 0 minus 1, that is minus 1. You square that, you get 1. So we have minus 1 divided by 2 plus 8, which will be 7.5. 7 uh, I think we can write it as 13 divided by 2 instead. So the coordinates of C, we have an X value of 0 and a Y value of 13 divided by 2. 13 divided by 2 is 6.5 and not 7.5. So we are supposed to have 15 divided by 2 instead. Let's go ahead and do 5.3. Calculate the value of d. d is a variable on g of x. Well, we know that g of x is equal to d divided by x. We are told that g of x and f of x, they touch at b. So b is a point on g of x. But lucky for us, we already determined the coordinates of b. The x value is 1 and the y value is 8. If we substitute that into g of x, of which we can do with no issues whatsoever because b lies on g of x and f of x, we're going to have 8 in place of the y value being equal to d divided by x, which is 1. It should be easy to see now that d is equal to 8. So basically, g of x is equal to 8 divided by x. Uh, that is 5.3. Seems like all is going well. 5.1, 5.2, 5.3. Let's see what happens in 5.4. In 5.4, we're looking for the range of g. g of x is equal to 8 divided by x. Well, if x is positive, we're going to have all positive y values, obviously, except from 0 and infinity. In order for g of x to be equal to 0, we need x to be equal to 0. And we cannot divide by 0, so basically, g of x cannot touch 0. So we know that uh, 0 to infinity is part of our solution. And then let's look at uh, when x is negative. When x is negative... Uh, we run from minus infinity to zero. We cannot touch zero even. The range of g of x is just minus infinity to zero and zero to plus infinity. So that is the range of g of x. It's not really hard to see. The only thing you need to realize is that g of x cannot be equal to zero. So basically, you can say that y is an element of real numbers, but y is not equal to 0. 5.5, we're looking for the values of x for which f of x multiplied by g of x is less or equals to 0. Right, f of x is our parabola. 
and g of x is 8 divided by x so let's talk about this 8 divided by x first when x is positive 8 divided by x is positive when x is negative 8 divided by x is negative that is very important to point out i'm going to show you why uh, but we know fully well that in our solution we cannot include x equals to zero whatever interval we can have it must not include x is equals to zero because g of x is not defined at that point we need to be aware of that well let's go to a graph let's let me show you something uh, okay so between minus 3 and 5 f of x is positive between minus 3 and 5 and then minus 3 minus 4 minus 5 going to minus infinity f of x is negative and then from positive 5 positive 6 going on and on f of x is negative uh, that is important to point out okay let's look at minus 3 to minus infinity and see what is happening so from minus 3 to minus infinity both f of x and g of x are negative as you can clearly see here both g of x and f of x will be negative if we multiply two negative numbers then our answer is going to be greater than zero so minus 3 to minus infinity is not our solution because f of x multiplied by g of x will be greater than zero let's look at minus 3 to x is equals to zero from minus 3 to x is equals to zero f of x is positive and g of x is negative so minus 3 to positive 0 is part of our solution we can include minus 3 because both f of x and g of x are defined but we exclude 0 because g of x is not defined at 0 so that is part of our solution now let's look at 0 and 5 between 0 and 5 f of x is positive as you can clearly see but g of x is also positive so that cannot be part of our solution if we multiply those two functions between 0 and 5 our answer is going to be greater than 0 and that's not what we're interested in let's look at x is equals to 5 to positive infinity x is equals to 5 to positive infinity f of x is going to be negative and g of x is going to be positive negative multiplied by positive that is negative and it will satisfy our inequality so what are we saying we're saying that we are also interested in the part where x is between 5 and infinity but including 5 we can include 5 because both f of x and g of x are defined so yes this is our solution for 5.5 uh, between minus 3 and 0 f of x multiplied by g of x will be less or equals to 0 same is true between 5 and infinity that is our answer to you 5.5 um let's go ahead and do 5.6 5.6 and 5.7 that's where things start getting uh, a bit interesting but uh, there ain't nothing to it but to do it let's take a look calculate the values of k such that h of x is equals to minus 2x plus k will not intersect the graph of g right we have h of x being equals to minus 2x plus k and g of x being equals to 8 divided by x so we're looking for the values of k for which x h of x will not be equals to g of x well let's say you have never you have never seen a problem like this before what are you most likely to do you're most likely to start by saying h of x is equals to g of x if we were to substitute here we would get minus 2x plus k being equals to 8 divided by x uh, obviously uh, this x is a disturbance so let's multiply out by x if we do that we get minus 2x squared plus xk being equals to 8 x and x will cancel out right uh, writing this in standard format we're gonna have 
2x squared minus xk minus 8 being equals to 0. I think most people will probably get to this point. But now you're stuck. You don't know how to carry on anymore. Well, as you can see, this is a quadratic equation. We're looking for values of k for which the two graphs won't touch. So basically, what you have to do, you have to find the discriminant of this quadratic equation. Let me show you how. Uh, the discriminant is equal to b squared minus 4ac. You know that your quadratic equation is not going to have solutions if the discriminant is less than zero. There's no square root of a negative number. So if the discriminant so if the discriminant is less than zero, then your quadratic equation is not going to have any solution. So we are interested in the values of k for which this quadratic equation is not going to have any real solutions. And in doing that, we have essentially solved our problem. We have the values of k for which the two functions h of x and g of x will not intersect. Right, that is a lot to digest, so maybe you need to rewind a bit and listen to it again. But anyway, uh, stories. The discriminant is equal to b squared minus 4ac. We are interested in the case where b squared minus 4ac will be less than 0. Well, in our case, b is minus k, right, the coefficient of x. So we have minus k squared minus 4ac. C is A, not C. A is 2 and C is minus 8, less than 0. So minus K squared, that will be K squared. There's a mistake I'm making, there's a mistake I'm making. I'm only realizing it now. This is supposed to be plus 8 and not minus 8. When I take 8 to the left hand side, it is going to be minus 8. And then when I multiply out by minus 1, then it will be plus 8. So this is actually plus 8 and not minus 8. Right, so we're going to have k squared minus 64 being less than 0. If we take 64 to the other side, we're going to have k squared being less than 64. Let's go ahead and find our CV critical values. So k squared is equal to 64 k is equal to 8 or k is equal to minus 8. The solution to this inequality, we have k being between minus 8 and positive 8. It has to be greater than minus 8 but less than uh, positive 8. So these are the values of k for which h of x will not intersect g. 5.6. Uh, let's do the last one. Let's do 5.7. So in 5.7, h is a tangent to g at r, a point on <coughs> a point in the first quadrant. Calculate t such that y is equal to f of x plus t intersect g at r. So we are interested at f of x plus t is equal to g of x. We want to find the value of t for which f of x plus t is equal to g of x. How can we possibly do that? Let's look at the information we have. Uh, we are told that h is a tangent to g at r. h of x is equal to minus 2x plus k. This is the gradient of h of x. So basically, we have the gradient of h of x at r, right? It is equal to minus 2 because h of x is the tangent to g at r. So what are we saying? We're saying that if you derivate g of x and equate to minus 2, you can find the x value at r, the point we're interested in. Let me show you how. So we want to uh, derivate g of x. Uh, let's start by saying g of x. Uh, so g of x is equal to... 8 divided by x. Uh, but this is the same as saying 8 multiplied by x to the minus 1, right? So if we go ahead and derivate this using the power rule, we're going to get minus 8 multiplied by x to the minus 2. But we know the gradient at r. 
the gradient at r is minus 2. So now we're interested in finding the x value at r. So we're going to say minus 8. Uh, we can take x to the minus 2 back to the denominator, which will be x to the power 2. Uh, if we cross multiply here, uh, we get 2x squared is equal to 8. We divided both sides by minus 1 at the same time. Right. Uh, so 2x squared is equal to 8. Uh, dividing both sides by 2, x squared is equal to 4, x is equal to 2. So the x value at r is 2. But we can take that a step forward. We can also find the y value at r because we have the equation g of x. So the y value at r, we're going to have 8 divided by x, which happens to be 2. So that is 4. The coordinates of r, we have 2 and 4. We are almost done. That is what you actually have to figure out. As soon as you figure that out, then it becomes extremely uh, simple. Right, let me show you why I'm saying that. Uh, we have y being equal to f of x plus t. But y at r is 4. So we're going to have 4 being equal to f of x, x is 2. So that will be minus 1 divided by 2, x minus 1. So that is 2 minus 1 squared plus 8 plus t. So 4 is going to be equal to 2 minus 1 squared, that is 1. So we just have a minus 1 divided by 2 plus 8 plus t. So 4 is equal to, what is minus 1 divided by 2 plus 8? That is 7.5, which is just 15 divided by 2. So we have 15 divided by 2 plus t. t should be equal to 4 minus 15 divided by 2 which is just equals to minus 7 divided by 2.